so moving along, we've got now the idea of the bubble sort. Remember, from the chapter you did have, it was 8.3, you had an example of the bubble sort that was the least efficient of the bubble sorts, where you go through and check from element 0 all the way through to the end in every iteration. And remember, it's going to take you n minus 1 iterations to get through there. However, what we have for you here is the modified bubble sort. What we know about a bubble sort is if we work in ascending order, so we want our um, elements values from least to greatest. What we know is each time I go through and check my elements from 0 to n minus 1, I know that we will push essentially all the way to the end of the list the largest number. That's a guarantee. Now, that means the next time I come through this list, I don't have to check n minus 1 because that's already going to have the highest value. So I've got the idea here of bottom because that's, you know, if we think of it uh, going from top to bottom, I know it's left to right. Um, but it's really the bottom. It's our last one. So what I'm saying is each time you come through your array, you can stop looking at whatever the last value is because the value in that element of the array is going to be the highest of what is remaining. So what this modified bubble sort does is say, great, every time we come through, instead of checking every value in every element of our array, each time we'll stop checking the last value, whatever that is. So each time we come through, the array essentially is shorter, is shorter, is shorter, is shorter, and that saves you processing time. Now, it is not a panacea here on processing time. This particular example is instantaneous, essentially, because it is only 10 elements in our integer array. You can see them up here on line number 12. So that saves you marginal amounts of time. However, when we're coming through on really, really big data sets, you know, that does make a difference. If every time I'm looking for, you know, 500,000 elements in my array, and I know full damn well that after the first time through my search, the 499,999th element is going to be the highest one, don't check it again. And actually, that does make for some serious computational savings by the time it is that we are done with our s bubble sorting mechanism. So let's get into it. Um, what I'm telling you here is I have two functions that we are going to use. The second function is the display array. I know that you have seen this before. We are simply going to use, and that is here on lines 25 through 30, we are simply going to use a simple for loop to iterate through our array and vomit it out onto uh, your output window here. And then we're going to have our bubble sort. Uh, and we'll walk through the bubble sort in just a moment. We've got here on line 12 our array of integers that is of size 10. So I have a 10 element array. So I'm going to ask you, uh, actually, first I'm going to display the unsorted elements in my array. Secondarily, I'm going to sort them. And third, I'm going to output those values again, but this time they're going to be in ascending order. So before we get down into any of this, I'm not going to hit run just yet. Um, we're going to come down here and look at what happens with our sort. So from the top, I'm going to pass to it values. That is my integer array. I'm also going to pass to it size because again, we need to let the uh, the the called function know the size of our array because we are really not passing it the array. That is too much data. That is too much storage being passed back and forth. 
C++ cannot guarantee how many times this array is going to be called. So it cannot set aside the space that it needs for that, which it has by preference. So instead, it is simply passing the pointer to the first value in the array and its location. That's why we need to know size, because with size, again, C++ can extrapolate. Okay, I know that values is an integer array, which means that I know if I know size, I can get to every one of those elements in the array. That's why we have these two values that we're passing there instead of just passing values, because again, it is not the array. It is just a pointer to the array. All of this is foreshadowing for next week when we talk about pointers on mass. So let's do that. Let's go look from line 17. We call down here to our bubble sort array. And now we come into bubble sort. I have these two values that I'm declaring variables that I'm declaring here inside of bubble sort a bool for swap. That's simply a flag. What I'm saying is, hey, look, if you've gone through one iteration here and you haven't swapped anything, that means it's in the order we're looking for and you can stop. Um, and I need a temp because the whole idea of the bubble in the bubble sort is we we need to take value zero and look at or element zero and element one and compare their values. And essentially what we do is we take one stored in temp zero assign it to one and then temp back to zero that's the bubble you're you're moving around this bubble we'll do it here in another moment um this number 40 line number 40 i have the number of elements minus one because again remember arrays start at zero not at one so with this idea of the bottom i can restrict 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 exactly how many elements we have to iterate through each time we go through our array so that i'm not wasting time on our last value last value last values because those are guaranteed to be whatever the highest next highest next highest next highest are because that's the way a bubble sort works so i'm using a do loop because i'm going to go as long as swap does not equal false. So I know it's backwards for a lot of the way that you're hoping to look at this. So I want to do this as long as swap is true. But because it's a do while loop, because these are evaluated as false for continuation, that's how we go here. Um, so swap equals false at the top of my loop, just to make sure. Uh, here, this is going to do all of the traversing through my array. So int count equals zero because we do have to start at the, the beginning of our array every time. Count is less than bottom. That's going to tell us how many elements we have to traverse through in our array. And count plus plus, that helps get us from element zero to one to two to three to n minus one, however many we have. So what I'm doing is looking to make sure that array at count. So the first time through, this is going to be our zeroth element is greater than array at count plus one. So I look at zero and I look at element one. And what I'm saying is, look, if zero is bigger than one, we have to swap them, right? And the swap happens thusly. These are these lines right here is the swap 51, 52, and 53. What we are saying is temp equals array at count. So I'm taking the value that's in element zero and I'm assigning it to temp. Then what I'm doing is taking array at element zero and I'm assigning it the value in count plus one. So element one's value is being saved over to element zero. And now what I'm saying is element one gets the value of temp. So essentially what we've done is we have made a swap, but we do need that third value. So element one goes to temp, element one's value goes to zero, and zero gets rewritten with temp 
and that's how we work this. So that's again the bubble. We move around. So element count plus one into temp temp. You get the idea. You're you're seeing the code here. I'm just repeating it for my own self at this point. Uh, and it, here my mistake on line number fifty nine. Bottom is decremented by one because I want fewer passes the next time I come through here because again the the result of going through a bubble sort is that the highest number is pushed all the way to the end of my array but each time I go through that is true so I don't need to check the last number the last number the last numbers because that's a waste of processing space um, and again this while loop is here because it's entirely possible you receive a a data set that's already in sorted order. In that case, check through it once and break out, you know, or nearly sorted order. So in that case, check through it once or however many times you need, and then you can break out. So I'm going to run this, and what we will see is the values before the bubble sort, 92011, you can tell that that ain't sorted. And here, the values after the sort is performed, 0, 1, 2, 5, 9, 11, 12, 22, 45, 67, and that is in proper order. So again, now you have two different methods for the bubble sort to work. You have 8.3, I think that was on page 481, where you had the unmodified bubble sort. Brute force will finish the job. And here you have the modified bubble sort where we remove the last element in the array each time we have to do the count because we know that that is where the last element of the array is where the highest value gets pushed to. So then we can forever stop checking whatever the last element is. So it's n minus 1, n minus 2, n minus 3, n minus 4 because we know that that already is whatever the next highest value was. So the modified bubble sort here is a little bit more efficient, but but you know, but it's not as efficient as our second sort, which is known as the selection sort, which comes next.